cafe. Anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. What? What? What on earth is happening here? It is time for Mike's Daily Podcast program with me. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's a podcast that is fun, and you will listen to it because you'll. I can't think of a good reason to listen to it. So, thank you for listening so far. It's going to be great. I hope you're in your car. If you're not in your car, maybe you're walking really fast somewhere up a hill and you're a superstar. That's what you are. Hey, I think we'll end it there. Mike's Daily Podcast. With the singing part. It's FF episode 2549 It's Mike. Mike's the last podcast Daily. was called Aquifer. Podcast. Because not many yeah. podcast episodes are called Aquifer. So we went with that But yes I have a very interesting announcement That I would like to make Are you ready? Here we go The announcement is The phone number no longer works The phone number that you were trying to call Has been disconnected The phone number that used to be 336-MM-DAILY Is now Oh crap I forgot what it is I mean, oh shucks, I forgot what it is. It is 510-228-4640. Yes, the Google giveth, the Google taketh away. I had the phone number 336MM daily, and apparently at some point last year, it got taken away from me. Of course, if you would have called it, you would have noticed that I wasn't on there anymore Or perhaps you did call it and leave some whoever, <laughs> Whoever's got the number now Has been getting calls from Mike's Daily Podcast listeners apparently But no one has notified me So I guess it's not a big deal It's okay We're alright We're gonna make it just fine Just you and me That's right And here's today's podcast picture The podcast picture today is of something that happened recently and I didn't prepare. You caught me. Yikes. So I will tell you what that is in my, the last podcast picture. Let's see, was that beautiful uh, picture of the Mission Peak in Fremont? You can see it at mikesdailypodcast.com. I took that picture on Saturday and everything is so green. One good thing with all the rain we get, because usually we're pretty brown. Our hillsides are golden brown, golden California. And the late great boughs of the boxer and I used to walk many of those hills together. But now it's not, not so much of a issue. Isn't that right, Basil? The late great boughs of the boxer. So now we have um, green. Everywhere we look is green. So the phone number once again. Now I, I had to get the. The number before 336MM Daily Well 336 the area code is actually South Carolina Or North Carolina Not sure One of those But Greenville North Carolina I think it's in that area code Okay well The new number Starts with a 510 And that's a Podcastro Valley area code everybody Cause we are in Podcastro Valley At Cafe anyway the last place on earth So good At least that is accurate now I don't know how you're going to remember 510-228-4640 There's a lot of even numbers in there 228-4640 But If you don't know what that number is You can either Rewind Or Click on uh, Mike'sDailyPodcast.com The website I have that number th- they're listed So we'll no longer Be doing the MM Daily anymore And that has led to some interesting issues In fact I've gotten some interesting calls Since we've started 510-228-4640 Alright so Here's the uh, issue that we've gotten to Lately When Since we've got this new number I've gotten a couple of calls And I'd like to play them for you So 
Here we go. Here's the first call to 510-228-4... What was it? 4640. So Google gives you a number. And if you don't use it enough, or if none of your listeners call it, then they take it away. And that's what happened to me. But hey, okay. Here is a call that I got. Hi, Mike. Hey, I'm just checking to see if this works. That's great. It's a bummer that it's no longer... 336 MM Daily, especially since I have that on every single podcast from yesterday backwards. But hey, life is backwards and Google is backwards and they just let something like 12,000 people go. So they got their heads somewhere that the sun don't shine. 510-228-4640. All even numbers except for the area code. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. That sounded like Mike. All right, and we got another call here also to 518, uh, 510-228-4640. If that didn't confuse you, then nothing will. Oh. Okay. <laughs> What's this call? Uh, Mike, why, why does the shower water always get cold? I'm freezing my ass off here. I'm getting out of my shower. Do you have any ideas? Maybe you can talk about that on your next podcast. Do you have any ideas? Well, yes, I do have some ideas. And they go a little something like this. What happens is a water heater can only do so much. And then you've then you've got yourself then you're just dealing with water that's unheated and that's no fun. So There I think I explained it all Here I'm going to play you a little bit of something We allowed to bounce Before we hit that ball Now keep in mind the kitchen itself Is not illegal So if someone hits you a ball That's going to land a little bit shorter In the kitchen You can step into the kitchen ahead of time Before it bounces Just make sure it does bounce before you hit it Now What the heck is she talking about? She's talking about Pickleball Pickleball Popping my peas You're welcome On my way home this evening (laughs) I was listening to the radio station Out of the Stanford University You've heard of Stanford Leland Stanford founded it When his son died His son wanted to study Oh so many things But he died But don't feel too bad for Leland Stanford Because he was really rich And he used people uh, Underprivileged people He used them extensively to his advantage He used and abused Okay, enough of that Read a history book, you'll find out all about it But Leland Stanford So Stanford University's got this great radio station I forget what the call letters are But I was listening to it tonight on my way home Enjoying the total lack of traffic It was wonderful I loved it Oh so much And the guy Was That was on the radio Was actually covering the local City council meeting For Palo Alto Because Stanford is in Palo Alto And I like I'm more of Palo Soprano But the Plosives But what he was doing was He was He was stretching for time As we say in showbiz He was filling the time That he was waiting for the council to start I guess they were having some kind of Hiatus or a moment A break in the action And so he was Filling that time By talking about pickleball Apparently pickleball has gotten really popular In Palo Alto So much so That a lot of Tennis courts in the area uh, Public tennis courts They're getting overrun With these pickleball players And they don't like it I didn't know what pickleball was I produce a show For someone who uh, Is on one of the radio stations That I am the operations manager for She has a program Where she has some doctors on And they talk about a pulmonary artery disease Or what happens What your doctor keeps warning you The older you get 
is that the your heart is going to get full of plaque and your ar- arteries and everything they're going to get full of plaque and bad things are going to happen my mom went through that horror over the last 20 years of her life i certainly don't want that to happen and i'm hoping to have the host of this show on my podcast at some point but she had on her pro- her show her live radio show one of the globe The Harlem Globetrotters And she and him were discussing Pickleball And I had never heard of that before And I'm like what What is it Basically what it is Is As I've Now I didn't know what it was Until this evening I looked it up on YouTube And that's one of the videos From Deschutes Public Library Deschutes Discours About what pickleball is It's like you You find that little area In the front part Of the tennis court They call it the kitchen That one square Think of the squares The lines Closest to the tennis Net And what you're doing Is instead of a tennis racket You're holding more of Like a I know this term Offends some people Ping pong paddle A table tennis paddle If you will I knew (laughs) One time I was walking past um, There's this gym um, That belongs to the Castro Valley The Pod Castro Valley Adult School And inside this gym The late great Basil the Boxer and I Went to a dog obedience class And I used to give him a bunch of treats We took this class for six weeks I learned a lot about training dogs And learned a lot about Basil I had, I had just gotten him So it was a very helpful class But then ever after that The next 11 years or so that Basil lived Every time we passed that gym That school He would pull me to the gym Because he was You know That it was equated with all the nice dog treats Didn't matter when it was I, I could never get him to detour He would pull me to it And we would be there by the back door And I remember one time there was a table tennis tournament going on. And one of the ladies who was playing table tennis went, Oh, what a nice dog. I go, is this a ping pong championship? And she said, no, 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 no. Table tennis. And I went, oh, okay. Anyway, it looks, cafe anyway, it looks like, pickleball looks like as if you are playing table tennis, but like without the big table. And you have sort of these table tennis type paddles But they're a little bit bigger And then the ball is like a wiffle ball That's The pickleball is like a wiffle ball And apparently this is the biggest thing going on in Palo Alto at the moment And apparently it's being talked about in Sports Illustrated this month And you maybe know more about it than I do But there you go As we go outside a cafe anyway Where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley the last place on earth anyway where we do not have a pickleball court set up but what was really funny about this radio program that i was listening to i wish i had recorded it or i wish i knew i don't think they put a podcast online but the guy the way he sounded like do you remember charlie's angels if you don't if you're much too young for charlie's angels go back and watch it find it on youtube it is the quintessential 70s uh everything 70s Is in this show You've got Farrah Fawcett You've got uh, a small person Who uh, likes to dance No wait There wasn't a small person There there wasn't a CVS An angry CVS cash register clerk Or whatever else Stefan talks about No It was uh, The Oh the, The lady that later went on to Scarecrow and Mrs. King Um There was the Uh Oh boy The fact that I can't remember their names right now The one that w- later was on The Wow The Victoria Principal Was she on that? Yeah I think so And then lo- The guy that played Bosley uh, His voice it, This is how this guy sounded If you remember the guy Bosley Played by uh, I think it was Bill Murray in the Reboot that they did with Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu. But the guy that sounded... Remember Bosley's voice? This is how this guy sounded on the radio. And he talked... As long as I've been talking... 
so far in this podcast, he talked that much and then five times that amount about pickleball. And the way he said pickleball over and over again made me laugh. So now I know what pickleball is, and now hopefully you do as well. And hopefully that helps you in life from here on forward. So I hope I've answered a lot of questions about about, uh, why there is something called pickleball, why your hot water heater doesn't work, and why I decided to do a podcast today. I mean, my lovely lady friend and I were having so much fun watching The Queens of Mystery, a wonderful British TV show with three sisters, three older ladies. And in England, if you are a woman who's an older actress, you don't dare get facelifts or any kind of plastic surgery. You just let it right. You, you come in oh natural. And they are not afraid to do that. In America, everybody gets everything done. I don't know exactly what they do, but just look at the latest um, Netflix, whatever that thing is going on with. I don't know who the actresses are, but there's something happened with a lot of stuff happening to the... Now, Dolly Parton, she gets away with it because she always caveats everything, prefaces everything by saying, hey, it costs a lot of money to look this trashy. But finally, I would like to say this, and that is, give me a call (laughs) if you disagree with anything I said today. 510-228-4640. That's 510-228-4640. Spotify is where you can also find this podcast. The link to that is at mikesdailypodcast.com where you can see today's podcast picture, which I don't know what it is yet. But Spotify sent me an email today saying, here is the podcast name generator. Do you not have a good name for your podcast? Let's see. My show is called Mike's Daily Podcast and it has been that for Almost, uh, what, 12 years now? I'm not going to change the name. But if I were to change the name, they have some randomly generated podcast names. Oh, this is actually Anchor that came up. I'm also on Anchor.fm. And the link to that is at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. I hear Rocky the Kitten talking. So it says here, push the button to randomly generate a podcast name and see what it is. Okay, so if we don't call the show Mike's Daily Podcast, what else can we call it? Let's see. Push the button. We can call it. I was really there and it wasn't that fun. People who are actually alive and in attendance at a famous concert, parties and events tell us their sad, mundane or deeply unsatisfying stories to help us stop romanticizing the past and cure our crippling FOMO. Oh, baby, I talk a lot about the past on this podcast, if you have listened for any qual- amount of time. And that's completely okay. When you do a podcast, I advise you to do the same. Even if you are young young as the um, socks that I am wearing, <laughs> which probably is not that young. But if you are super young, even your experiences would be fascinating to hear. And let's press this one more time to find another interesting podcast name. A, B, C, D, G, A, F. The D, G, A, F look at parenting from the perspective of parents who try their best. Well, I guess that would... uh, D, G, A, F, by the way, is slang for don't give a flying flip to not care at all. A euphemism... Initialism used to indicate an indifferent or unbothered attitude without explicit vulgarity. The old me cared, but the new me, DGAF. I see. All these abbreviations today. And the F would not being a flying flip, it's something a little bit stronger than that. Okay, I see here that these podcast names can be a little bit blue. Food Court at the End of Time This is a radio teleplay About a near future apocalypse That forces humanity to rebuild itself From the empty carcass Of the world's last mall Food Court Interesting So I just did those on the fly by the way If you couldn't tell 
And that's what Anchor does. One other bit of interesting news. Shall we go with that? Okay. I'm going to grab a a story from a conservative-leaning... Um... I guess uh, newsletter is what we'll call this. Nike closes flagship store in Seattle citing crime. That's according to the Daily Mail. Crime-ridden Seattle has lost its downtown Nike flagship store and multiplex movie theater as crime runs rampant. And the number of homeless people dying has soared. The Rain City's downtown area suffered its latest blow on Friday when the popular Nike store, located at the corner of 6th Avenue and Pike Street, it shut its doors for good. Pike Street, by the way, that must be where uh, the the Pike Street Market is, I would imagine, which is really famous, is where they throw the fish. And you can get all kinds of cool things for relatively less expensive than usual. Fish is less expensive in, in some of the store booths, storefronts. And there is also, you can get uh, flowers, beautiful flowers and roses and whatnot, pretty cheaply there. Nike's exit came right after Regal Cinema announced it would reject the lease of their 16 multiplex location on 7th Avenue and Pike Street. Fox News says Seattle has been dealing with a violent crime spike in recent years, including a 23% increase in fatal shootings in 2022. The city is also contending with issues of homelessness, drug use, and catering foot traffic stemming from, oh, cratering foot traffic. It is no longer as busy with foot traffic this after the pandemic. And one more interesting bit of news from the conservative-leaning folk. Fox News says conservative TV and radio host and former uh, candidate who is running for governor of uh, California, Larry Elder, he took aim at a new proposal by San Francisco's Reparations Committee to pay each black longtime resident of San Francisco $5 million dollars. While warning that the movement in support of reparations is growing as young people are being indoctrinated, as he put it, into its supporting narrative. He told Fox News, young woke people are being indoctrinated into believing that systematic racism, structural racism, historical racism is why black people are underachieving. And then there's a very right-weaning guy by the name of Charlie Kirk who said they want a, and he's a young guy. So, you know, it's kind of, he's kind of an aberration because young people generally, generally, as I've experienced in this world, are far more liberal. You get more conservative the older you get and the more money you get. And it's interesting because the young people, if young people, young quote woke people Uh, are saying that, hey, there should be reparations. It's only because uh, it'd be interesting to see if we could put them in a time machine and see, you know, all the money that they've made as they got older. Would they want to still put that money to that use? It would be interesting. But Charlie Kirk says they want a guaranteed minimum income for every black citizen of uh, San Francisco uh, $97,000 a year They want those payments to last For the next 250 years This is not some sort of abstract college essay This is an actual policy recommendation Done by the San Francisco government Well I don't know If San, Fr- San Francisco does make a lot of money Or it did make a lot of money Because of the tech industries So, with the tax money that they generate there, would they be able to pay that kind of bill? Is the question any sensible person would ask. I live about a 45-minute BART ride from San Francisco. I knew early on when I first visited the Bay Area, I would never be able to live here. The only reason why I was able to move to Podcaster Valley was because when my father passed away, he left me some money. I was able to sell his house, basically, and then buy this house. 
uh, I, I owned no property before dad and I thank him every day for what he passed down to me but it is so difficult with with to live in San Francisco for the average person that wants to stay in San Francisco they might to stay in San Francisco they might need something like this is if I doubt San Francisco can pay the bill especially cuz we can see right after this crazy flood that we had on New Year's Eve they were not ready they were not prepared New Year's Eve and I get all this information I pulled from the local news station uh, that's owned by CBS. And if you have any real dyed in the wool, wait, is that the expression? Dyed in the wool? Anyone who's, who's, who's very pronounced conservative will tell you CBS is slightly left-leaning sometimes. But they... We're saying that, hey, even San Francisco was unprepared, not ready for all the water. Uh, There was a lot of, there was a a lack of foresight. And a lot of people now are being, their feet are being held to the fire. And it'll be interesting to see what San Francisco does to try and remedy this. But, I mean, at some point they're going to be hurting for money and they won't be able to pay this huge reparations bill we'll see but it's food for thought and it's an interesting conversation and you can tell me what you think at the phone number that i just remembered again is 510-228-4640 we're outside a cafe anyway somewhere in podcastro valley the last place on earth look who's here hello matthews it's shelly stewart gift shop supervisor where'd your cat go i don't know he just he was here he meowed at me Last week, he jumped on my lap while I was doing the podcast, and let's just say he passed some cat gas. That was not good. Mike Matthews, that's disgusting. I know. Look who else is here. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, I think everyone in San Francisco, they should be paid a lot of money since it costs so much to live there rent is out of sight and the houses are way too expensive <laughs> it's just not fun going there anymore when i first moved here i was oh i'll go there all the time and i i went there enough times to get to know some of the shortcuts some of the little things you can do like if you want to check out a cool ferry ride and see a, amazing views of the Golden Gate Bridge, of Berkeley, of Treasure Island, of the Golden Gate Bridge. You take the ferry from the Embarcadero, from the ferry building to Sausalito. And that's a wonderful trip. And you get all the sightseeing packed in that one trip. And if you used your Clipper card, I don't know if this is still the truth. I think this all changed but the Clipper card that they have here in the Bay Area would allow you like five dollars off but I don't think they do that anymore but I enjoyed it but then then it since the pandemic and since all this other stuff went on in the past couple of years I'm like no that's okay there's other things to see in the Bay Area so much to see at some point I'd like to go back though but yes, maybe that's what we'll do. The podcast picture today will be of some time when I went to the Bay Area in recent memory or whenever that was. So see that at mikesdailypodcast.com. And next show, it'll be the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. And with more ways to reach me, it's a Frank. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.